You are listening to the Enlightenment Evolution Network. Welcome to Earth Sky People Radio. Living in harmony with Mother Earth and awakening to an intergalactic society. With your host, Victoria Vides, founder of Reiki Wellbeing and co-founder of the Earth Sky People Movement. Hello, this is Air Sky People Radio with your host, Victoria Vives, and you can find me at victoriavives.com. Today is Tuesday, September 2nd, 2014, and I would like to tune in together, so take a moment to take a deep cleansing breath, connecting with your heart center, breathing deeply in and out and becoming more and more aware of your connection with the Earth, Mother Earth. You can even feel her energy holding you safe, secure, noticing you. So enhance that connection by sending some love to Mother Earth. And when you feel that connection with Mother Earth, Beautiful green roots come from your feet into the earth, passing through all the layers of Mother Earth and connecting you with all life on this planet. So you can feel more and more our interconnectedness, all of us together bringing love to Mother Earth. Take one more deep cleansing breath and with that awareness of our connection, we're going to start the show. <laughs> so we are together in Earth Sky People Radio, Earth representing our connection with Mother Earth and nature, and Sky representing spirituality and life beyond the Earth, extraterrestrial or extradimensional life. And last week we joined together with my shamanic mentor, Gretchen Creeley McKay. And you can listen to that show in the archive, and it was really amazing information. <laughs> and today, we have a very special guest. She is one of the hosts at the Enlightenment Evolution Network. Her name is Karen Newman. Karen is an integrated channel, medium, Reiki master, and metaphysical teacher. She shares about A Course in Miracles, Hinduism, Oneness, and she also channels tears. She has a varied and diverse background, including that of being a singer, dancer, writer, and also working in the sport, nutrition, and fitness world. So, welcome, Karen. How are you? Uh, thank you. Namaste. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Mm, I like the meditation in the beginning. That was really beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. I really like that opportunity to join together at an energetic level. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. It's perfect. Okay, I would like uh, really very much for you to share about your show because we are in the same network. That is so exciting to be here together. I know, and we started in the same week, so that's, that's our special bond. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> my, my show is called About Oneness, and that's really what it is. It's, a, it's about recognizing and, and reaching out to everyone who is starting to wake up to mm -hmm. the oneness of us all. Wow. And that's the, that's the goal of the show is just to, to just help us keep waking up just more and more and be more and more open. And so my, I have a lot of, you know, I have the whole marketing spiel that I say about the show, but basically <laughs> that's it. And, and I just, as guests, I only want to have people on there that I find fascinating. Mm. And, and so to share those, you know, those people with the listeners and, you know, open up phone lines and let people call in and ask questions and just, you know, being able to interact with some of my heroes oh. that I've, that I have, heard of now and maybe hear of in the future but it's wonderful and as you know just to interact with people that 
that share your, you know, your your interests and your philosophies, and maybe you're walking down roads that you've never walked down before. Wow. So, how beautiful! And I can see in your career a very uh, interesting change, which is very similar to mine actually, because I also did a lot of uh, singing and all of that. <laughs> I know, I saw. <laughs> So how was your past, how it transformed in this way? Well, it's not that, I'll tell you, and this is um, the interesting thing, is that spirituality has always been my primary focus of my life. Oh, wow. Since I was a little child, that has all always been what I've been primarily interested in. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the, how you grow up, and it's not, you know, my, my family was always supportive and open and they just let me go and do what I what I felt led to do but I always had these sort of separate lives I had my mm. fitness life you know and I did gymnastics and I was oh, competitive yeah. in that and then I started uh -huh. dancing and singing uh -huh. and then of course later I started working and I always kept everything separate and because there just didn't seem to be a lot of room to be to have this the level of spirituality that I was really sort of interested in as mm -hmm. far as, you know, being completely consumed with the love of of God. Wow. And so I kept everything really separate and it's really only in the last few years that I have sort of come out to the world as mm -hmm. yes, I'm a singer and <laughs> I <laughs> and I'm a medium and yes I do sport nutrition. You know, the people who I was working with and I in the sport nutrition world didn't know that I even sang. And I was oh. and I had a a very active and very busy singing career. Wow. And you know, and the people who were singing didn't know how much of in, into spirituality I was. And mm -hmm. so I've just now really I guess become brave enough to bring everything <laughs> together. <laughs> And I know what you mean about brave because I felt the same. Like I, I was living several different lives, and yeah. doesn't it feel amazing to be able to put everything together? <laughs> it does, and it's still, you know, it's the level of acceptance, and whether people accept it or not, you know, it's never been a big. Um, I don't, it, I don't want to say it's been a, it hasn't been a concern because I haven't offered it to everyone, but I am completely surprised about how accepting people have been and how many questions and I've actually gotten some messages from people saying wow I didn't realize you were so into spirituality oh. and wow that really has helped me a lot and I, wow. I've been very surprised by that so yeah it's yeah. great and it's I'm, really great. I'm sure that all of this part of you that is a spiritual really translates in, in the music or the dancing that you do or anything that you would do because it totally comes uh, through in a different way, doesn't it? I think so. I, You know, I, I think that what it has woken me up to is the realization of how an, any artist who's good, you know, at what they're doing and is, is really tuned in, whether they realize it or not. It's nice when you know that's what it is. But I think whenever you're doing any kind of art, whether it's writing or painting or anything, you really are channeling, um, mm -hmm. you know, something. When I write a song, generally I hear the song and I write it down. Right. I don't really, I don't really sit down and try to find words to fit it. I just sort of listen to what's floating in the air and write it down. And it's always worked that way for me. So, Beautiful. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That is awesome. I really love that. And one of the things that you focus on is A Course in Miracles. Is that correct? Well, Course in Miracles has been a very um, instrumental thing for me because it it has some of the uh, terminology and some of the just truths that I've known since I was a, a small child. Wow. And when I read them, which was, you know, years later. I don't think I picked up Course in Miracles until I was, you know, in my, say, late 20s, the mm -hmm. first time I actually started looking at it. Wow. And there there was actual verbiage in there that I had actually been hearing already. Oh. <laughs> so for me, it was just huge confirmations of, yes, I really am 
hearing these things <laughs> and feeling them. So in in that way it, it's just been a it's been a clarification of what I've known, but seeing it coming from a completely different place, a different person, you know, it's just, you know how synchronicities work. Oh, These little yeah. confirmations, they just, so for, in that way, it, it that's what that book has been for me, and that's what that course has been. And it's also been a way to to get lessons and to be taught in a gentle way more of who I am and, and and why I'm here. And and when I say me, I just mean sort of everybody, you know, why we're here, what we're here to do. And I, I love it. And I, what's interesting is now that we've gone through this amazing shift and people are really starting to open, yes. even though Course in Miracles was written, you know, it was written over a period of 10 years from 1967 to 1977, um, it, it's really relevant right now I, I, it was written then but it it couldn't be more important than it is right now wow. so absolutely. it's a good thing to visit mm. oh yes absolutely we can use all the tools that there are for sure <laughs> yes exactly so uh, for somebody that doesn't know about A Course in Miracles what would you share with them about this book what was the most special thing that you feel can help people's lives in this book? Well, well the, first, the first thing in the book is the introduction. And, and I don't have it completely memorized, but I do pretty much. And it says, wow. this is a... <laughs> That's amazing. Very, memorized. Well, <laughs> oh, my goodness. I didn't know that. <laughs> well, it's but it's very short. It says, this is a, oh. a course in miracles. It is a required course. Right. I remember. When that. you do it is up to you. Right. But, but, the, but the curriculum is not open for discussion. I'm summarizing now. So basically it says that everyone will do this. This right. is the journey of the soul. Right. And when you decide to do the work, this will be it. And it's not open for discussion what the course is. But then it goes on to say that if you, that the truths of A Course in Miracles and basically the truths of the universe is that nothing real can be threatened mm. and nothing unreal exists. Wow. Yeah. And that's it. If you get that, you've got it. <laughs> if you understand that nothing real can ever be destroyed or hurt in any way and right. nothing unreal is really even exists, then there's no need to worry about anything. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. So that's yeah, that's the most important part of a course in miracles, okay. right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I know that it is a long process to go through the book. I I have not been successful at Completed it yet. <laughs> I just started twice with two different teachers, um, with different groups, and for some reason, it my life was telling me this is not for you at this moment. So I I stopped both times. But I really enjoyed the teachings, and I you know I may come back to it for sure. <laughs> well, we do a class every. Well, it's not a class. Let's just say it like it's a discussion. We have mm. a discussion every Wednesday. Roxanne Swainhart is right. joins me on that, and also uh, Crystal Vandenacker, who's my twin soul, my colleague. Mm. She and she we we've been working through it, and you know our idea about it is there's no time frame that we're working on going through everything. Mm -hmm. We are only in chapter two now, oh, and okay. it takes about two hours to discuss one paragraph because I think <laughs> it's important. Yeah, it's just important to let to let the information sink in and then all the discussion about it hmm. to come through because right. then it, you really take it in. And, and we're not in any kind of hurry. We're not in any kind of you know, we'll read it in a year. I think at the rate we're going, it's going to take 10 years. But um, that's, that's okay because yeah. everything is exactly when it needs to be. So, exactly. I, yeah, if but, you approach it like you want to try to get through it, you'll, you, you, I think it'll frustrate you and you won't. It makes sense. It makes sense. And in reality, once again, um, 
what you were saying about what is real and not. We are eternal beings, so in reality, we don't need to be in a fairy. So. <laughs> <laughs> I like what you said. Ten years is okay. <laughs> and for people that would like to, to listen to that um, discussion about A Course in Miracles, where should they go? To your website, about oneness.com or... Yes, they can go to aboutoneness.com, and there is a tab called A Course in Miracles, and you can listen in. All the all the discussions that we have um, are posted on YouTube as well. Oh. So you can, but you can. The best place to do is to go through the website, and there's about five that I still need to put up. So nobody nobody judge me. <laughs> <laughs> I still have to put five of them up. And, uh, yeah, you're but. doing amazing work because not only the the course of miracles, but you're also doing uh, the channeling and the radio. So, for sure, we totally understand that you <laughs> you have those five chapters. It's totally fine with us. <laughs> <laughs> but if anyone would like to join as well, if they would send a message to me in aboutoneness.com, you can go to the um, contact page and say that you would like to join and we would you know be welcome to having people join us in our in our discussion either weekly or whenever they feel the feel the need it's always nice to have you know the more minds you have focusing the more there is to learn and that's the the way we're approaching it beautiful and for what i know another of your passions is hinduism Mm. How, how did you come to that in a very strange way. <laughs> well, I had, I had, you know, I had been talking with God since I could talk and could hear and and everything, and I hadn't really uh, known anything about Hinduism as a child. But I, I went through, you know, learning about Christianity and at one point sort of not I don't want to say transitioning away but being open to different things and as you become more involved in eastern thought you um, you start to explore things so I started reading different Hindu texts but it really didn't take hold I think it you know it it, I read I read the Bhagavad Gita I read the Maharada uh, the I can't even say it right now. I'm, I'm tongue tied because I'm I'm a little bit <laughs> jet lagged. But I but I read some of the Vedantic text, and then mm. it didn't really, you know, the information was good and I liked it, but it didn't really take hold. I didn't quite understand it. But I had a friend who was Hindu, Hindu by birth, mm. and he was Indian actually, mm. and he was just a good friend of mine, and he ended up getting very ill. Um, he had what started out as a cold and then it ended up being um, heart failure at 28 years old. And um, so I decided being, uh, I believe, a very strong spiritual person that I was going to pray. And I was going to pray as long as it took for him to be better. And I just made this decision. And just something said to me, He's Hindu. You need to pray to his God. Wow. So oh I thought, goodness. all right, I'll do that. Oh. No. Oh. And so oh. I consulted his cousin, who was another friend of mine, and I said, you know, I want to pray. And he was, his, his God was really uh, Krishna, mm. who is um, a different aspect of the one God. But I'll talk about that in a second. Yeah. And I started you know, I started looking at the different Hindu gods, and I just came across Ganesha, who is the mm. god with the elephant head. Right. <laughs> and he was fat and cute, and, oh. and I thought, oh, I like you. But <laughs> I didn't know anything about him, except that he appealed to me on some level. Mm. And so I started to learn about him, and he is the god that removes obstacles. And I thought, well, you know, there's no bigger obstacle than a a guy who was now, you know, one moment having a cold and the next moment almost needing a heart transplant. Mm. And they weren't knowing if he was going to make it through the night. Mm. So I learned a Ganesha mantra 
which was Om Gom Ganapataye Namaha, which is basically, um, you know, the Lord God Ganesha and the remover of obstacles. That's basically all it's saying. Mm -hmm. And you just chant that mantra over and over again. Well, I started, I set up a small altar and the altar was basically some flowers and, you know, a picture of Ganesha. That's all I had. Mm -hmm. And I, I began chanting and I chanted for about four months every day for about five hours. Wow. Oh my goodness. Five hours. Yeah. I would chant, uh, two hours in the morning. I chanted the afternoon. I was, I was, I was so, this, this friend of mine, we were such good friends and I was so, I was just not going to stop until he was better because I couldn't, I couldn't understand how this was happening. It was just, it just seemed so wrong to me. Mm. And, you know, I even, I, because I, I I called on everybody that I knew on the other side and anybody I knew that had passed on. And I was like, I've never asked you people for anything, but you cannot die. And so I I did. I chanted. And in that period of time, I fell in love with Ganesha. I really had just an amazing connection. And the 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 love and the energy of that just built and that was not my goal at all Mm. and in that time I learned a lot about who Ganesha was what Ganesha represents and Ganesha is the well Ganesha I'll just explain in Hinduism Hinduism has a lot of gods Mm. um, but there is only one god is the belief system there's only one universal truth which what you can call source or the universe or whatever you want to call it. But like facets of a diamond, these gods represent different things. And whatever is appealing to you, there's some sort of physical Whoa. manifestation wow. in, the, in the personality of a god. Thank you for so, sharing that. <laughs> you know, yeah. sorry to interrupt, but, you know, when I had my awakening, like uh, mm-hmm. when I was in Spain uh, about... 15 years ago, um, I connected very strongly with Hinduism, but I was a little confused with all the different um, uh, beings, and at that time I didn't find teachers, so finally I kind of let go of it, Um, and that that you just said is so helpful to understand that it's just the different facets to see what you connect with, and it's so interesting because one of my students, that is almost like my sister now, (laughs) She's very much into Hinduism, so I reconnected with with Hinduism now. And one of the beings that really re- connect with me is Rama. So I don't okay. know if maybe later you can tell me a little more when you complete <laughs> about Ganesha. <laughs> yeah. So so Ganesha, he has interesting um, aspects. He he was a child who. Uh, he defied he defied uh his father and that's how he lost his head and mm-hmm. and then his mother who was quite quite angry and also a, a god said you know you better put his head back on and bring it back to life <laughs> but that's but he, but ganesha has specific aspects he has the ability to see things from a larger perspective mm. he he understands the bigger truth, and that always has appealed to me because that's what I've been always looking for. I, I wanted to see things. He, his, he is, Ganesha is housed in the Om. The Om is the seed of creation. So if you are praying to Ganesha through the, the Om, you are actually t- touching his essence. Mm. Um, and everybody is Oming. So in some way, everyone is connecting to that same energy of true true universal uh universality and true oneness and and ganesha represents ahimsa which is a is a concept of do no harm oh, and he's really universal unconditional love and and that's always what i've been um focused on mm. so he he was just he just you know, and I didn't know any of that um, going in to, like I said, for to 
chanting for my friend, wow. but all of that has come up, come about. And there's a I don't know if you've ever studied magic or high magic. Have you? Are you, um, you know, I didn't focus so much on that. No. <laughs> okay. Well, in the there's a book called um, the it's called a, a the Abramalim the Mage, and it's it's a a man from he was a Jew and he talked about in order to do magic which you know magic is really just setting an intention we do that all the time right. but in order to do that you had to connect your holy guardian guardian angel and part of the principle of that was spending about 6 months in prayer mm. to your guardian angel to wow. build that connection and once you sort of had that strong connection, then you would understand the principles of the universe, and then you would understand how to set an intention, and then you would understand how to create. And that's what, we, what we've been doing now in this sort of expansion, is people are learning to create their own reality. Yeah. Well, that's all magic is. That's all magic <laughs> is. It's about creating what you want, setting an intention. And so in this First, at the, the first part of really doing that um, was connecting to your holy guardian angel, mm -hmm. so that you have that strong bond, so that you know, with beyond anything, who you truly are and what you truly believe. Mm -hmm. And I believe very strongly that by having this long period of prayer to Ganesha, I actually did that i i made that such a strong bond wow. in the same way that is, is explained in that in that study so beautiful wow that's so special thank you so much for sharing it and for somebody that would like to explore and start connecting with their god in hinduism what would you recommend so that they feel a little less lost about it well, what I would first recommend is meditation, and I would recommend oming, just in the simple, basic idea of quieting yourself. Mm -hmm. And then I would, what I would do is, it because it's not so important that you uh, that you connect to a god, or because it's the aspect of what it is you want to to understand. You could just read about. You would you have to do a little bit of. Uh, research, but you could just read about the different gods. Say, pick the top five. Mm -hmm. Take Kali, Ganesha, Krishna, Rama. Vishnu, Rama, <laughs> right, uh -huh. right, and and <laughs> and and then see about you know what what appeals to you about them. Mm -hmm. But I I I believe it's the same thing as a guru, you know. You are called to a specific, to a specific god or a specific guru or a specific um, energy because that's really you. You know, if everything is your mirror, if everything is is, is an extension of you, it's just finding yourself, isn't it? So by being open to it, you just all you really need to do is when you do start meditating, just say to the universe, I am open to knowing myself more and more. You know, bring me me mm -hmm. and be open. I don't really think that you, I don't think, I don't really believe that you have to chase any of it. I right. think you have to be open and what is really important for you will show up. Mm -hmm. I really believe in that more than you know, explore it, of course, read about it, but I don't know that you should chase any of it because That's it's only true. you trying to find yourself, isn't it? Yeah, and life is going to take us to where we have to go for sure, the same that happened to you. Yeah, yeah. You might just be praying for somebody and, you know, <laughs> next thing <Right>. you know. <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah. So just as my curiosity and maybe for some people mm. that is listening, do you know about Rama? What would you share about Rama? Well, Krishna is Rama, mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. You know the the Hare Krishnas. Yes. They they are focused on on Lord Krishna, and Lord Krishna is the is the sort of God, 
I mean, he would. He's he is God, God, the God, God of mm-hmm. of God. So, if you have you ever read the Bhagavad Gita or not? No, at that time I just started reading a little bit, but I did not complete it. Well, no. cr- well, it's you. Everyone should read it if mm-hmm. if they just out of curiosity. But it's a conversation between Krishna and Arjuna on a, on a battlefield of war, mm-hmm. and Arjuna is a wonderful human being who is completely upset about the fact that he is going to be warring over land and people that he will be fighting are people that he's known his whole life and he can't understand how this war is just and basically Krishna speaks to him and says how basically we're eternal beings and that this is just a game that we're playing this is just a stage uh, that uh, a theater production we're taking part in basically and krishna lays out the entire aspect of spirituality and it's it's one of the most important books of the vedantic texts right. and it talks about who we are and it and it talks about oneness mm. basically that we are one and that there's nothing that can be if you die you just are dropping your body so don't worry about it. Don't worry. Just but but play your part in this world mm-hmm. as you've chosen to do. So Krishna is God, and the the what you're calling Rama is in the you know Hari Krishna. Hari Krishna is just Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna. Hari Rama is is just another name for Krishna. Mm-hmm. But if you're attracted to to uh, Rama, then you're attracted to basically the one God, because okay. Krishna says, "I am." I should find it for you and read it to you. But Krishna says, "I am of the of the beasts. I am the lion of the of the water. I am the ocean. He is mm-hmm. the largest aspect of any of the different parts of God. He is." If you think of Krishna, you think of all of it right. at once, as opposed to one smaller aspect. You're looking at the bigger, the biggest aspect of it. Hmm. He would be God. He would be Allah. He would be all the diff- Odin. You know, yeah, we're talking so, about God, God. So the same would apply with Ganesha. Do you feel that you also? Um, find that connection more with Krishna at the end or how you think? Well, I, I, well, I don't, I, I, my connection to Ganesha is more of an emotional connection of appreciating the, um, what he represents and, and aspiring to those things. Mm. But I would say if you were to look at the because Krish, because Ganesha is not sort of giving um, dissertations on life, whereas that is what Krishna is doing. That is what God did in the Bible, and Krishna does in the Bhagavad Gita. And Krishna is a representation of everything, and Ganesha is more of the aspect of oneness and the sort of universality I, I don't it's harder it's hard to explain yeah, no but, I can understand I can understand what yeah. you mean yeah okay so. <laughs> thank you so much for sharing about this so many oh, things to learn oh my goodness <laughs> <laughs> and about oneness what is your perspective on oneness how would you describe it to somebody that wants to experience more of that feeling of oneness well, I can say it from the aspect of, of myself is that when I was a little girl and I I wanted to know God, that was what I wanted to know. And I didn't really want to know anything else. And I was talking to God and was hearing God, you know, as four and five years old. Mm-hmm. And about the time that I learned to read, I had, we had a very big Bible and that was the, really the only kind of, you know, we didn't. We weren't religious, and we didn't go to church or anything. But we had this big Bible, and I thought that well, that's where God lived was in this big Bible. Mm-hmm. And so I I pulled out this big Bible, and I was saying, you know, 
if this is the words of God, then what words do I need to know? And mm. so I, I was saying, you know, how do I know you? What do I, what do I need to know? And a voice said to me, just open the Bible uh, to a page and look and see what you see. And so that's literally what I did. And I opened the Bible and, and I looked down and I saw the the First uh, John 4.20 and it it said, if a man says he loves God but hates his neighbor, mm. he is a liar. Mm. For how can he love God who he has not seen but hate his neighbor who he has seen? Oh. And then I heard that's all you need to know. Mm. And so I had very quickly the idea of if I wanted to know God, I needed to love because God was love and I needed to be love. I needed to love everyone as mm. myself because they were me. I didn't understand they were me, but I understand in the beginning that it was about total acceptance of other people right. and really loving them. And as I got older and as I started to understand more and you start to realize that, you know, they say we're all connected because we are all one. Well, what does that really mean? Mm -hmm. It means that we're all part of this source. It, it, you know, we're all part of, of God and we're this part of this, you know, we're a drop of the ocean, which is God or Krishna. Right. But when you take a bit of the ocean, if you take a cup and scoop up ocean and walk back to your house, well, it's not just a cup of water. It's still ocean. Mm -hmm. And that's what we are as human beings. And so if we're really all part of the ocean, then there's nothing different than than us. There's no, you know... And so it just means to me that we are all really one. We're all part of this source. And what is the point of of seeing anything different? Mm -hmm. And and my my work for myself um, in this time and is you know I I say to my guides and I say to God and when I pray and to Ganesha I always say I don't want to just know about oneness I really want it to be who I am now mm -hmm. and not I don't want to have to think about oh yes we're one I want it mm -hmm. I want it to be so much a part of who I am that there is just no question in my mm -hmm. mind beautiful yeah mm -hmm. so that's where I am and I and I think a lot of people are getting to that point now and I'm not there but that's where I would like to be Mm, beautiful. And the journey is exciting. <laughs> huh? The journey to it? it? The journey is exciting, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so now we're realizing the oneness. Now, but later we have to just so much be the oneness that if anyone told us that we weren't one, we would think it was absurd. Oh, yes. <laughs> I like that thought. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mm, beautiful. And another big thing in your life is channeling. Is that correct? Yes, it is. It's it's changed since I first started. Um, How did you get started? Well, like I, I've been saying, I've been talking to right. um, my guides and mm. God since I was a little child. And they were talking always to me. Um, and I was having... You know, sometimes just, you know, they would just say whatever they want to say. And then other times I would, you know, have, you know, conversations with them because, mm -hmm. you know, I always have a lot of questions. And so I would, you know, ask, pose questions and talk to them. But a few years ago, for the first time, I got names of mm -hmm. who they were. Wow. Um, they, and I had never, to be honest, it never dawned on me. Uh, to ask who they were, because I just knew it was, <laughs> it was my, I just thought it was my higher self. But there's the personality didn't start really coming through or changing um, in in the way of um, them being distinguishing themselves as something other than uh, just 
this sort of knowing voice in my head. And I started to understand there was a different be- difference between what I was hearing from what I learned to be guides and then what I was sort of getting from, I would say, God. Mm. And so then I started to really pay attention to that and focus on that. And then at one moment, they told me who they were. Mm-hmm. And and yeah, so and then eventually, uh, I was I was doing automatic writing. Um, I was always getting words of knowledge as I was talking to people. I was pretty much I was very close to the idea of channeling at all. I didn't want to do that. Mm-hmm. I I didn't know that I liked the idea of giving over at that time what I would believe would be control, but that, oh. that actually isn't what happened or how it works. But that's what I thought and I thought, no, I, you know, I don't I don't want to go away and then right. come back and yeah. So are you practicing uh conscious channeling or trans channeling? Well I I basically it's it's more trans channeling at this mm-hmm. time. Okay. The, the conscious channeling that I do is more that if you and I are having a conversation and then they say something to me, then I'll mm. just, I don't, like Nora Harold just goes back and forth very quickly. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, between who she's, you know, who's speaking. And I hear them, but they don't literally come in um, and, you know, I don't step aside for a second. They come in, and then I come back like she does. Basically, mm, I see. if you and I are having a conversation and something comes up, then they may say something to me, and I'll say, oh, my God, you just said to me this. And that's how, oh. you know, that's my conscious channeling. And the rest is trans-channeling. Oh, I see. That makes sense. Yeah. So um, the name of your of the entity or the collective that you are channeling is Theos, is that correct? It's Theos, yes. Mm. And what I understand is that they are all aspects of me. They're all part of me. They're my, I wouldn't, they're they're my higher selves, but in different, actually different incarnations of me, of my soul. And um, there's three of them. Um, the word Theos means word of God, mm. which was, I believe, chosen very much um, to give me comfort because I've, like I said, always been about God. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> and they're they're at a very high dimension. They are not. Uh, they are still slightly physical, but they mm. are. Um, I they don't have. They have physical shape, but they are not, they're light. They do not have physical bodies. Wow. So if they were to appear, um, you, they would appear in a physical looking shape, but they don't actually have physical bodies. That's what I would like to mm, say. I see, yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so would you invite them to come in? Yes. I just oh, need a second. I yeah. can. I just need a second. I need to um, ohm and um, just let them come through. And and I will I will be here, but I will not be talking because when they're talking, I'm kind of I'm hearing everything, but I'm, yeah. I'm a little bit on the side. So sounds good. Okay. Okay. Let me. Okay. Mm.
connecting with you. Thank you for being here today. We are very pleased to talk with you. Mm. <laughs> I can feel the love. Thank you so much. <laughs> we raise our hands and namaste. Oh, same to you. <laughs> I would love for you, if you have any message to open this channeling, any message for our audience, that would be beautiful. What we say always to the channel, to Karen, is think love, be love. It is not a matter of becoming. It is a matter of being. Mm. You can be whatever you think. So what do you choose to think about? We always recommend that you think about love. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much. And would you describe um, who you are, where you are right now, anything about your life that can be inspiring to us so that we can move beyond of our uh, physical life and just see for a moment uh, your life? Karen is laughing in her at the moment because she knew very much that you would ask this question <laughs> and we told her specifically the answer oh. when you ask where we are oh. the idea of physical location <laughs> is not really true no. we are is the location we are. Mm, that makes so much sense. But we exist in different dimensions because we are three. We are a collective. We are a collective mind, a group mind, if you will. Mm -hmm. And we're sitting on the edge, as we explain, of different dimensions. And it's only as we focus that we dip in and out of these dimensions. Mm. Sometimes we are water. Mm. Sometimes we are air. Sometimes we're the smallest molecule or the space between. We mm. go and we experience and then we return. Beautiful. That's so beautiful. And you know, when... You mentioned water. <laughs> this morning I was in the beach and I love the ocean. And at the same time I feel that we really need to do something about our earth so that we restore our relationship with our mother earth and we can bring greater healing to the planet and respect the planet. Is there something that you would recommend for us to do for this transformation? You mentioned the ocean, and there is no greater metaphor for the oneness of the planet. Mm. Water is a great connectivity because of the crystalline structure of the molecules of the water. And as mm. you're standing in the ocean, setting an intention that intention spreads throughout the entire world, mm -hmm. through every molecule, through every crystalline structure. Wow. You yeah. can have before you a simple glass of water and set your intention with the idea, as Karen was speaking earlier, that a glass of water is not any less ocean. Mm. 
Mm. than the full ocean itself. And when you are setting your intention into the water, you're setting your intention into the whole world. Mm. Beautiful. I'm happy to hear that. I was actually singing uh, to the ocean for healing. So (laughs) I'm happy because now I feel that it went really throughout the world. So thank you. (laughs) Well, it goes very much throughout the whole world. You are very correct in your assumption. Oh, so beautiful. (laughs) And what would you say, I know that maybe your focus is not so much about um, intergalactic things. Uh, It's one of my passions, uh, the idea that one day we will expand our awareness to connect with other planets, other beings, and... From your perspective, do you see this happening or how do you think it would be a good way to to really become an intergalactic society? One moment. Sure. Intergalactic the word intergalactic, inter, internal. Mm. The connections will not be made outside of you. Mm. The connections will be made inside of you. Mm. When you understand, and we don't mean you, we mean all of you, When you understand the interconnectivity, the true oneness, there will be no need to journey to anything. There will be no need to reach out to anything. Because when you have the connectivity of oneness, you have the connectivity to everything. Inter, inside. The goal is not to find what's outside of yourself. The goal is to know what's inside of yourself. And when you know that, you know everything. Mm. Everyone. There is no distance between you and you. Right. That is the hardest thing the human mind will ever understand. And that is why you are waking up. If you never wake up, you will never understand who you are. Hmm. It makes sense. I certainly always feel that at this moment we have internet as a reflection of our interconnectedness and we need the computers but I feel that one day we won't <laughs> and we will be able to just connect through our inner wisdom or inner world so thank you for bringing that awareness about this idea of intergalactic society as well and I would like to know if by working on our inner world also that will reflect in our physical world in some ways so that we can start experiencing uh, that connection with other beings. I'm a little very uh, excited about this idea, as you can see. (laughs) It's a beautiful idea to understand you. Again, we will say to you, the moment... And it will not be just one person that will that will connect with intergalactic beings, mm. but it will be as a society this wow. will happen. There needs to be a mass level of consciousness, a mass level of understanding before it's possible. Right. The work is not only for you, but it's for all of you. Hmm. That sounds 
very long and process. <laughs> And the impatience that people feel is because it is brimming. It is coming. Mm. So keep working. Keep finding yourself. Keep looking inside. Mm. Beautiful. And that is one of the reasons why, why I'm actually creating this show so that we can as a collective, become more aware of these things, so there's something that we can talk about. <laughs> I see you. I say I as us. I see you, Victoria, sitting with your hands joined with many people, mm. creating a circle of light. Hmm. raising a vibration, creating a realm of oneness. Hmm. And you and your people will achieve a level of closeness that will bring you ever closer to seeking and understanding and finding what it is that you are asking. Hmm. You will have these connections in your lifetime. Wow. I have chills right now. <laughs> How beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and another question um, that I feel is helpful for all of us is how we can connect more with that sense of unconditional love, acceptance, self-love, anything that you will recommend as a generality and also as a daily practice, so both aspects, something just to keep in mind, some ideas, and then also something that we can actively practice. Mm. One moment. Mm. This is a beautiful question. Mm -hmm. The one thing you can do is never see anyone as different than yourself. Mm -hmm. And not only say that in words, but know it in your heart. Mm -hmm. The people around you who challenge you are you. The people around you that love you are you. There is no difference between the two. There is no value of one greater than the other. The realization of this is a decision in the beginning. Deciding this is the first step towards total oneness. Mm -hmm. You are one. You just don't know you're one. Mm -hmm. right. There's no exercise other than being love and letting go of everything that is not love out of your life, out of your thought, out of your deeds. Mm. Thank you. And one last question. I would like to know uh, from your perspective what the animals, the beautiful animals that populate our earth are reminding to us. Is there a message that they bring into us as a collective? Or I know that many of us feel an, a very strong connection with animals and their beauty and their 
just their presence in our lives. So I was wondering if, from your perspective, there is something specific that they intend to remind us. It's interesting you ask the question of the animals. The animals are raising in consciousness Mm -hmm. to more of a human ability of thinking. Mm -hmm. They feel now more than they have ever felt Mm -hmm. on a human scale. But animals have always been connected to consciousness. Mm -hmm. Feeling has not been as developed as it is now, but every part of the earth is opening more towards feeling. Mm -hmm. Animals represent total understanding of who they are. They don't question their part of the universe. Mm -hmm. If you want an example of connectivity, look at an animal. Look at the trust an animal has in finding their food, Mm -hmm. in following their instinct. They don't Mm -hmm. question, they don't debate, they don't feel guilty. (laughs) They just are. Right. How beautiful. (laughs) Would you say that something similar applies to what I call stone people or rocks? (laughs) Something crystal? Every every manifestation of your planet, of the universe, has consciousness, has connectivity, has knowing has something to teach, has something to share. Mm. A stone has the experience of being part of the building of your planet, being part of the structure of the planet. Mm. The teaching of a stone is like the storage of a computer. Wow. A stone is all knowledge held in the crystalline structure. Mm -hmm. A stone has come forth with the consciousness of being the conduit of knowledge. That is the job of the stone people, as you say. (laughs) They are the libraries of the earth. A very important job. Wow. That is a very important consciousness that comes through. Hmm. Beautiful. Trees are much the same. Trees are the teachers. I can see that for sure. I always feel that beautiful wisdom coming from any element in 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 the earth, whether it is just the four elements or the animals or the plants, it is such a conversation continuously giving us guidance and love. I will challenge you to understand that you are also part of the stone people, another Mm. aspect of you. You are also part of the tree people part of the air people Hmm. those are all aspects of you wow beautiful (laughs) thank you so much Sears for being here with us today do you have any message that you want to leave us with our only message is never worry. <laughs> Only trust in the love. The love. It's only about the love, the oneness of the love. Mm. 
think love, be love, be one. We are Theos. Thank you so much. <laughs> Namaste. Namaste. Mm, beautiful conversation with Theos. Karen, are you there? Are you back? I'm coming back now. Oh. I'm coming back. Yeah, it's interesting because I physically was moving so very much. I don't know if I was making a lot of noise. <laughs> a little bit, I was wondering, but not very much. It was they, very they, good. they really were moving uh, my head and, and my hands and, oh. and doing all kinds of interesting things, yeah. Oh, interesting. And we were about to do this in video. Imagine, we will have <laughs> I, I, I listen to most everything, I, but um, did they say anything that surprised you or, or because I, oh, yeah. Many things were very special. Uh, some okay. of them I would feel an inner knowing and some of them were a little more like, oh, this helps me seeing it in a different way. It was beautiful to be able to speak with them and some of the questions actually came up kind of out of the blue, and it felt like it was needed to be asked. Okay. Yeah, Yeah, all the information was beautiful. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. I really enjoyed that they shared about um, the ascension in consciousness of the animals, for example. Mm. Uh, I feel that that is something that I can see, and it is so nice to hear it from them, so... Yeah. I, I I had that conversation with them a, a while ago, and and they're you know I even see it in my own animals, my own dog. Right. She she's so smart and mm. so interactive on so so many different. I mean, she really has the range of emotions more so than um, say a dog I had twenty years ago, and mm. and I, I want to say she has the she's communicating more on a human level and i know that when i connect to trees and when i speak to them mm-hmm. now it seems that their connection is more human and they have there's more emotions mm-hmm. but i i do agree with that the consciousness that they have has always been there yeah but now they're they're really evolving in a more yeah emotional an emotional way yeah, amazing, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so to complete today, um, do you have something that you want to share about any of your services, your radio show, your events? Well, on the radio, I would really like people to listen to the radio. Show. Yay! <laughs> I have I have a lot of really amazing guests coming mm. up, and um, you know. Once a month, uh, I'm on with my twin soul. We do readings for people. Right. But um, So ed- anyone can contact at any time. I do personal readings. You can you can uh, reach me on aboutoneness.com for personal reading. But for the rest, I would just like people to tune into the show. And, and mm-hmm. I would also just like everyone to do what Theos was saying and, you know, Try to let go of all the idea that you're different than anyone, mm. that anyone or you has more value, that anything has any value other than just being part of part of the oneness. I, I, that's all I would really <laughs> like to see happen in the world. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I liked what they said about connecting. I didn't really know that, the, mm. the thing about the, the, the idea of, going internal? inside. Yes, yeah. yes. That's yeah. beautiful. I always think about that for, for us as a human collective and I do have my connection internally with other beings but I like how they expressed to start focusing on that more. As well, you know, oh, sorry, I don't want to... No, no, no. They were just they were just talking to me as we were saying because I was because I hadn't heard them say that like they said it just now and mm, and yeah. they said how do you think you're talking to us? Oh, <laughs> right, right. Then it's it's true. Intergalactic. It it certainly talks about inter internal. 
Yeah, and if any any channeler is connecting internally to right. that they're wh- who they're channeling. So if we so if you want to have the connection, yes, right. I think I think what you were saying is you'd like to see a spaceship land and and have all the stuff. <laughs> I just want them here. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But I think the thing is they probably are here and be you know the yeah. the actual stepping out as you would say maybe will come after that connection is made internally. Right. right. So. And I do feel that connection. I I just what they have told me is that I really have to to focus more on it. You know like, like what you said of daily practice for a few months. Because I have my very strong connection with other spirit guides, but not so much maybe with uh, certain beings that I could really, really devote more time to that. So I feel that that is a part of the work I have to do. (laughs) Mm. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Okay. Wow. That was really beautiful. And we talked about so many different things that it has been a very very interesting show, Karen. (laughs) Oh, good. I'm glad. Yeah. And for anyone who wants to go to Karen's website, uh, it is aboutoneness.com. That's the main website, right? Where they can find everything. (laughs) They can find everything and more and more is coming all the time. Ooh, exciting. Okay, so thank you so much, Karen, for being here with me today. We have an opportunity to talk because we talk on Facebook, but now we talk in yes. person. That's awesome. Yes. Thank you. Thank you <laughs> okay. so much, Victoria. Much love to you. Much love to you as well. And we are going to close this show now. Just remember our connection. And today, what we have to close is going to actually be Karen Newman sharing about all the announcements for all the different shows. I'm so excited because she created this beautiful recording with all the information. So she's going to make my job very easy today. (laughs) And also I wanted to to just announce the show for next week with Christopher Niargas. He's the author of several books of Wild Foods, Wilderness Skills, nature awareness, ecology awareness, so he will be here next week. And as you know, this is earth and sky, so today we have more of the sky aspect, and next week is going to be the adventure in the earth, in the wilderness. So all the details for that is at victoriavives.com forward slash radio. And now, the announcement by Karen Newman. Hi, this is Karen Newman from the show About Oneness. And here's what's coming up on the Enlightenment Evolution Network starting on Monday, September the 1st through Sunday, September the 7th. Rob Gautier, founder of the EEN and the host of the show that started it all, the Enlightenment Evolution Hour, has put together the greatest metaphysical radio network ever. Seven days a week, we have shows that will aid you on your path to enlightenment, evolution, and ascension. Starting on Mondays at 6.30 p.m., Pacific Standard Time and 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is Heart to Heart Talk Radio with Daniel Scranton. Join Daniel and his featured guests discussing a wide variety of metaphysical topics. Daniel channels the Creators, the Hathors, Ophelia the Fairy, the Archangel Michael, and the latest, the Unicorn Collective. Daniel and his guests will take phone calls and questions and it's sure to generate high-frequency discussions. You can find more information about Daniel on his website, danielscranton.com, and also on Facebook. Go to the Events tab on Daniel's website to learn more about Daniel's upcoming events. On Tuesday at noon Pacific Standard Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, please join hosts Megan Crandelmeyer and Rachel Archelaus for Radio Inspiration, Expression, and Abundance for their show, Soulfulpreneur. Spiritual business specialists Rachel and Megan will bring you inspiring conversations with people who are living their sole purpose. Frequent guests include psychics, mediums, channelers, coaches, artists, and authors. They end every show with psychic readings and business coaching. Your questions about your spiritual business or life purpose journey are welcome. Wednesday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific, is the show that started it all, the Enlightenment Evolution Hour with host Rob Gauthier. 
Rob channels Treb on the first Wednesday of each month. He will take callers' questions. On the third Wednesday, they will have special guests such as guest channelers and other metaphysical teachers. The other true Wednesdays are freestyle call-in shows to discuss whatever callers have on their minds. Tune in to Rob on Wednesday nights and you can find him at TrebChanneling.com and on Facebook at the Enlightenment Evolution Network group page. Rob has two special announcements. Introducing what is shaping up to be the event of the year for Treb Channeling. We are very excited to have some of the greatest channelers in the world. On Sunday, September 13th, beginning at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the Channel Panel. This is a live, interactive, online event. The event will be easily accessible to anyone with Internet on their device, phone, Mac, or PC. This is a six-hour event with the greatest names in channeling today, including Brad Johnson, John Kelly, Nora Harold, Rob Gautier, and Daniel Scranton, and your host, Kalina Angel. The cost of this event is $45, and if you go to TrebChanneling.com, you can register and find out the details there. Also, the much-anticipated sequel to the groundbreaking film Tuning In, called Tuning In Now, is now in the fundraising stages of production. The movie Tuning In Now will feature channelers such as Daryl Anka and Bashar, Lee Carroll and Cryon, and our very own Rob Gautier and Trev. Tuning In Now will explore the amazing work of today's top channels and how they are helping to awaken the consciousness of the planet. With a contribution for as little as $15 all the way up to $50,000, you can make sure that this film is made. Please go to Indiegogo.com, that's www.indiegogo.com, and type in the search, Tuning In Now with the number 2. There is a full list there of plans for contribution and how you can help. On Thursday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific, join host Philip Malika with the Consciousness Evolution Hour. Join Philip and his special guests and co-hosts as they discuss the shift, ascension, timelines, metaphysical concepts, and the fifth dimension. Find Philip on the Consciousness Evolution 2.0 group page on Facebook and on YouTube. On Fridays, The Earth Experience with host Kalina Angel, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific. The Earth Experience explores our soul's expansion through our human experiences on Earth. Kalina will help you navigate through the exciting confusions that we are manifesting as new 5D beings. On Saturday, Odyssey of Ascension with your host, Roxanne Swainhart, starting at 8 a.m. Pacific Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join the one and only Roxanne Swainhart for two hours of Knock Your Socks Off Ascension download. Be open, be ready, and just be with her while she answers your questions about ascension, extraterrestrials, soul purpose, energy activations, and all things ascension. Roxy is a channeler and ascension guide extraordinaire in these extraordinary times. Living in San Antonio, Roxy received an awakening experience and promptly exploded onto the metaphysical scene, posting videos, blogging, doing live group channelings, and changing the lives of all she encounters. She features guests and channel entities such as the Sifius, the Hathor Guides, the Sani Guides, and the Collective Oversoul Fire, just to name a few. On Sundays, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 11 a.m. Pacific is my show, About Oneness. About Oneness is a weekly radio program focused on celebrating the ongoing conscious awakening of our planet and our realization of oneness. I'm an American originally from Charleston, South Carolina, now living in The Hague in the Netherlands. I'm an integrated channel, medium, Reiki master, and metaphysical teacher. I have a varied and diverse background, including that of being a singer, dancer, writer, as well as working in the sport nutrition and the fitness world. As a channel, I bring forward the information of my non-physical guides called Theos, whose message is always that of oneness and unconditional love. The show for me is about integrating all of my experiences and following my highest excitement, which is tapping into truth and learning more about my place in the universe. If you want to learn more about me or hear about my upcoming guests, as well as see many videos about channelings and teachings, you can go to aboutoneness.com. 
My guest on Sunday, September 7th, is Crystal Vandenacher. She is a medium, Reiki, master, and channel. She will be online taking calls and giving readings. Then on the Enlightenment Evolution Network 2, on Tuesdays, join host Victoria Vives at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific, hosting Earth Sky People Radio, your bridge between heaven and earth. Victoria's guest this week will be me, Karen Newman, and we will be talking about A Course in Miracles, I will be channeling Theos, and we will also talk, of course, about oneness. You can find more about Victoria Vives at victoriavives.com forward slash radio. And you may think that that's all, but there are several new shows coming on to the Enlightenment Evolution Network too, including a show by the Pied Piper, details soon to follow. Then starting on Sundays, September 21st, The Resonance Intention, hosted by Soul and Neo Gower. The Resonance Intention show is dedicated to all things frequency and vibration. They will showcase conscious musicians who infuse frequencies into their music and are set out to raise the vibration of humanity through their music. They will have an in-depth conversation with various artists about their passion, purpose, and personal journey that led them to where they are now. Additionally, they will routinely have guests on the topics of free energy technology and other quantum modalities or technologies that are coming into existence now. The Resonance Intention is a platform for artists, musicians, and inventors to increase awareness of their personal approach in order to contribute to the paradigm shift we are currently within. And remember, you never have to miss any show on the Enlightenment Evolution Network. All shows are available to listen to again immediately after they air on playback. All right, back to the show. This is Victoria Vives, host of Earth Sky People Radio, living in harmony with Mother Earth and awakening to an intergalactic society. You can tune in with me every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pacific Time, which is 9 p.m. Eastern Time, and check all the information about this radio show at victoriavives.com forward slash radio. That is Victoria, B-I-V-E-S, dot com forward slash radio. And this is the Enlightenment Evolution Network 2. So this is a different phone number and everything. 347-215-8586. And you can call in for questions or just for listening. Remember, every Tuesday, 6 p.m. Pacific Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, Victoria Vives with the Earth Sky People Radio. Looking forward to connecting with you. Bye. You are listening to the Enlightenment Evolution Network. Welcome to Earth Sky People Radio. Living in harmony with Mother Earth and awakening to an intergalactic society. With your host, Victoria Vives, founder of Reiki Wellbeing and co-founder of the Earth Sky People Movement. 